Well, hello folks, my name's Ian, welcome to my shed, and it's a little bit of a continuation of yesterday's video. I really, I really shot too much video yesterday, and uh, I couldn't fit it all in that uh, mail call. So today we've, we've, we've carried on, and I want to try and tie a few of those loose ends up. We've, uh, well you can see that, we, we've made some space. Nice and tidy. We've uh, we haven't touched the chainsaw. I really need to be looking at that pressure washer and some or other that big thing. I have one guy commented and said that silver bit there. Let me get a bit closer to that. That silver bit there. Can I take it apart and show it on a video? Well, yeah, I'll do that. It'll not be tonight, but during the week, I'll probably clear my bench. We'll go in there next. And then uh, I'll probably get that on the bench, get that stripped. Let's go in there. Yep, I know it doesn't look like a lot to you lot, but look at that. I've got a walkway and things sort of neatly stored ish over there but it does mean i can get through without tripping over and uh, breaking my neck i was having a laugh with easy days on wtf mike's stream earlier with that tidying up a bit done some stripping tell you what i'll put you on here well, it was time to start a new bag out for the, uh, well, this wire. So we'll throw that on in there. It clears the bench off a bit. But I'll leave a couple of bits out to, uh, to show you a few things. Yeah, that creates a bit of space, doesn't it? Right. Strip what I can. Sometimes the easy bits. Well, look at this. There's a, a big core cable. So that's simple enough. You've seen this before. Show sure, I I really people tell me I should get myself. A wire stripper and I will sooner or later or I'll make the own but I don't really get a, enough cable really to warrant buying one even though I've said I can actually buy one borrow one so all this is just taking things down to its uh, smallest components Cable, and you've got a little bit of plastic liner type of thing in there, which I'll take out, and that I'll strip at a later date. Some things you'll think are just not worth stripping. Well, we've got this very tiny. Probably not think it's worth stripping. Uh, too many. It all depends on what it is. You want to see this? I'm going to. To be honest, struggle doing it. That's because the plastic is really too hard. But you know what you can do when the plastic too hard, can't you? You can get an hammer, and you'll find that some. I just easier to just hit and and the and it just breaks off like that. So you got straight copper. Don't always have to strip it with a knife. Yeah. 
should I, should I start off a copper ball? Eh? Nah. So that's that. Carry on with the rest. Over these. We, uh It's all the grinder which uh, all the magic smoke came out. Well, I've taken that one to bits. And you go there. So, a little bit of tracking on that uh, segment, turn it round, and a bit of tracking on that segment. I could take the uh, the rotor out of the stator. I'll have a little look at the stators. You've got a little bit of dust. They don't actually appear to be burned out. I think that was the... Uh, with the majority of the damage there all that that little bit let all that magic smoke out ah we'll uh, we'll strip it we'll see what the gear heads are like and probably keep it to repair another one right so we're taking uh, this other grinder didn't i where at the end where the cable had been cut so what i've done there is trimmed it back a bit I need to see if it works. Once upon a time, a long time ago, I picked up this in some scrap and it's a, well it's a fused unit so what you do there, plug it in, L for life, so in that case it's brown, under there, and then it's Blue for neutral, under there, it's not plugged in, those are not live until I knock this over and then it's the connection, switch it on, nothing went bang, we've taken the drive nut off and the locking nut, because I don't want them going whizzing off and So, there's nothing wrong with that one. That a, a replacement cable won't sort out. Win, win. Right, so I'm, I'm getting there. I'm tidying up. You know, you bring it in. It, it takes a bit of a while. The, these batteries I picked up. You know, I picked up about eight of these. Uh, I'm going to turn the light out here. And this one. As well. So we're going to go dark. Here we're going dark. I found out there's a little switch on the top of here. If I press that and hold it down, you get a light which eventually turns green. I don't know if you saw that. It turned green. I need to look up. I need to Google that because there's a few in there. Some stay blue, don't go green. One goes blue, then it immediately goes red. It's got me intrigued. That little bit of research goes into that. Ah, uh, so I brought this blue tub home of bits and bats. This one which I emptied up on the desk. Rubbish. Ah, basically, I've, I've sorted all that out now. What I can break up, get more out of. Uh, what I want to keep. And this. Which I showed in the last video. I went through that pile and we got, ooh, 
couple of pounds. That's a kilo of non-magnetic, non-ferrous material. Always in. We've got a bunch of screws. But what we did find was this. Now initially, when I found this, I'll put that behind a bit of cloth so you might be able to see it better. Found that. Uh, as I pulled it up like that, it was like Well, it was like, well, well, to be honest, I've been watching The Curse of Oak Island. We're on season seven now, and they're making some great discoveries. Uh, they found a few Roman, I think they're called pike heads, like arrowheads. So when I see this, I think, oh, wow. What have I got here? I've got my first thought was like, oh, I've got a I've got a Roman arrowhead. Not arrowhead. It goes on under the big poles, which is like a pike staff. I don't know the name of it. So I'm thinking like, wow, wow, how old is that? I, I know there's people watching now going, Ian, you daft sod. You know what that is, don't you? Well. After a couple of minutes, yes, I realised what it was myself. Clean it up a little bit. Well, you can't stop a man from dreaming. You take dreams away from a man, what's he got? Nothing. So, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, what's that? Is that Roman? What is it? Oh, that's well forged, whatever it is. And I turn it over, I see that bit, and it's a shank. Well, if you look at that, those have been pressed in and I don't think they had presses in the Roman days and then it kind of dawned on me it's actually a scraper a hardened steel scraper so uh, I'm actually looking forward to <sighs> cross my heart up to die do some woodworking and I'm going to make a shaft wooden handle for that and bring it back to its glory well there we go a whole lot of uh, stripping went on uh, bench is pretty much tidy one thing i've got to do now is to put that lead on that angle grinder send that to uh tech sparky you know who you, you know who you are. You know you know who I mean. Uh, it comes on uh, snobby stream. Tech with a sticker soon. Right. In the best tradition of scrapping in the shed with Cruiser Mac, I'm going to pour myself a beer. But not any beer. No, not any beer. You see, I was on a live stream with real wicked canadian and he professed a penchant a penchant for guinness so what did i have to do well i had to go out and buy some guinness didn't i so i can put my hand on a bottle opener and we'll tip the top of this We'll have to pan back a bit here, aren't we? Because I want to make a pig. Want to make a pig's ear of pouring this. 
and I'm gonna to have to do it this handed. Warm, of course, Cruiser Mac, not cold. Now, as real wicked Canadian would say, it looks like something that you would pour into your engine. But it's a stout, so it's gonna be black. And give it just a little right little bit of head. Look at that. Don't that look beautiful? I'll give you people just a moment to appreciate that. Just as I'm going to take a moment in appreciating it myself. So, Ian in his shed. A little bit of a scrap life in the shed life update. Uh, the guy who commented about the boiler, that'll be in the next vid. So, cheers, or as Scrapping Irish taught me, Slauncher. Does that work with beer, or just with spirits? <sighs> An acquired taste indeed, Guinness. You got... I'll stick that up for there for you. Guinness, the original. Not a strong beer. Coming at 4.2%. They do a Guinness Porter. That's 6.4%. I might try one of that next time. See you lot. Here, dirt and around. Bye.